Oh, greetings everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, I was going to do stones and rocks. You know, what do they say? Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Oh, I don't know about that. Jesus said, by our words, we would be justified, and by our words, we'd be condemned. Uh, maybe I need to look that up, show you where it says that. So people don't accuse me of taking things out of context. Yep, that's uh, words of Jesus in Matthew 12 and verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's why the Bible always says, confess with your mouth, you know, the Lord Jesus. Uh, so, enough of that. Uh, I'm going to do resurrections in the Bible. Everybody thinks, oh, that's in the future. You know, there were several resurrections in the Old Testament, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. So, let's take a look at my favorite prophet, Elijah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I did a Bible study on him. We had to report, do a report on a, uh, I think a New Testament and Old Testament figure. So I picked Elijah. And boy, there's a lot of information on him. If you want more, I got an hour and 40 minute study on him. And he's going to be one of the two witnesses that comes to confront the false prophet and the Antichrist, beast, man of, man of sin, son of perdition. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, now, who was Ahab? Ahab was the king of Israel, as opposed to the king of Judah. They had different capitals, different kings, and fought against each other at different times. So who was Ahab? Hmm. Well, in 1 Kings 1630, and Ahab... The son of Amri did evil, evil, in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. So, sounds like the Lord's not too happy with uh, Ahab. So, Elijah said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain, these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, Elijah, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Chirith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded, commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Chirith, which is, uh, that is, before Jordan. And the bra ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Uh, just in case you don't know it, a brook is like a stream, so... Matter of fact, that would be a good thing to look into. All right, a brook is a small, shallow stream that is usually fed by a spring or seep. Brooks are often found in valleys or wooded areas, and their water is often clear and cold. You can usually step over a brook. A creek is a narrow, shallow stream that's usually smaller than a river and often flows into a larger body of water. Creeks can be found in a variety of environments, including forests, marshes, and meadows. You can usually jump over a creek. Okay, good to know. 
All right, so um, all right, so verse six, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Verse seven. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And we're reading from 1 Kings chapter 17. 8, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So did he give, did the Lord give her a dream or something? I don't know. Verse 10. So he rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Starvation, people. Starvation is not pretty. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So, in other words, her barrel of meal and her container of oil are not going to run out until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and her and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Now, you know, I honestly think this is going to happen um, in the tribulation period. And or the Lord bring, send manna from the sky when the church goes in the wilderness, chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. So, 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness, his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, uh, and by the way, E.L. has reference to God. So basically, his name is um, El, uh, God is Yah. I mean, that is basically what his name means. Yah is God or God is Yah. You've heard Yahweh, Yahovah, Yahshua. I don't know. Just know that anytime you see E.L. in a name, it has reference to God or a city, or a place, like Bethel, Michael, Daniel, Gabriel. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance, and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, 
Hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come again, uh, come into him again. Why three times? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? Verse 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. All right, let's go to the uh, Second Kings chapter 4. And uh, we're going to read about Elisha, not Elijah, ja, but Elisha, E-L, e -L, reference to God, I-S-H-A, E-L-I-S-H-A. Verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go. Borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. In other words, borrow, borrow as many as you can. Borrow all of them. Every single empty thing you can find, borrow it. Borrow not a few. Verse 4. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. So she's got a, a container of oil and she filled up many containers of oil from this one container that uh, didn't run dry, well, didn't run out, didn't stop running until all the vessels were full. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned him thither to eat bread. So here it is, this lady, every time uh, Elijah passes by, he, she invites him for dinner, I guess. Verse 9. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, he stood, she stood before him. And he said under, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us for all this care 
What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is to be done for thee? Uh, what is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a, embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. Verse 17. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. 19. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. So... If you uh, ask me, it sounds like he's having a, a stroke. Uh, what do they call a, a stroke in your brain? Yeah. Verse 20. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before him and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon the twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. So here it is, the child came back to life. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called, and he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son and went out. So there you go. May as well finish the chapter, huh? 
And Elijah came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. Dearth. What is dearth? It means a scarcity of something, often leading meaning a famine, an inadequate supply, as in a shortage of an essential thing. So, all right, uh, let's go back here. Verse 38. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Sit on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds his lapful, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. So obviously this was something uh, poisonous, right? But he said, Then bring meal, and he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm, no harm in the pot. And there came a man from Baal Shalisha. And when you see that word B-A-A-L, that is a generic word for Lord. And it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. All right, so in verse 42, there came a man from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley, and full ears of corn, and the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What? Should I set this before a hundred men? And he, uh, he, he said again, Give the people that they may eat, for thus saith the Lord, They shall eat, and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof, according to the word of the Lord. All right, let's go read 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 1. In the three and twentieth year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria. Did you catch that? There's a king of Judah, and there's a king of Israel. Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned 17 years. And he, the son of Jehu, did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the sons of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. So the things that uh, Jeroboam did that made the Lord angry, well, so did the son of Jehu. Verse 3. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadab, the son of Hazael, all their days. Now remember, the Assyrians' empire carried Israel away into captivity. And part of Judah. They never returned to the land. Verse 4. And Jehoahaz sought, besought the Lord. And the Lord hearkened unto him. For he saw the impression of Israel. Because the king of Syria oppressed them. And the Lord gave Israel a savior. So that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel sin, but walked therein, and there remained the grove also in Samaria. Uh, groves are where the witches would do their little things. Verse 7, Neither did he leave 
of the people of Jehoahaz, but 50 horsemen and 10 chariots and 10,000 footmen. For the king of Syria had destroyed them and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now the now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz and all that he did in his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Jehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Joash his son reigned in his stead. In the thirtieth and seventh year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 16 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Joash and all that they did and his might wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah. Did you catch that? The king of Israel fought against Amaziah, king of Judah. Joash, king of Israel, fought against Amaziah, king of Judah. But the demon nominational church world will tell you Israel and Judah is the same thing. But yet they had different kings, different capitals, Samaria and Jerusalem, and they had they fought against each other. Just goes to show you their lying and spiritual bankruptcy. And the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did and his might wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Joash slept with his fathers and Jeroboam sat upon his throne and Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now, Elisha was fallen sick of his, uh, of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, so I guess he said this before he died. I, that's what I'm guessing. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said uh, to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrows, uh, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria for Thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou hast consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. So he only shot three arrows and he stopped. And the man of God was wroth, angry with him and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times till uh, then hadst thou smitten Syria, till thou hadst consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice, three times. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, now listen carefully, 21. 2 Kings chapter 13, 21. And it came to pass, as they were bearing a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man. All right, so if somebody dies, they're getting ready to bury him. But they see a whole group of men that they don't know. And they cast the man into the sepulcher, or the grave, of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Just this guy's dead. And just because he touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. Wow. Now we're going to cover a little bit of something more of this. 
Verse 22. But Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. And the Lord was gracious unto them and had compassion on them and had respect unto them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and would not destroy them, neither cast they, uh, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So Hazael, king of Syria, died and Ben-Hadad, ben his son, reigned in his stead. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, took again out of the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities, which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoahaz, his father by war. Three times did Joash beat him and recover the cities of Israel. So, just the bones of this mighty prophet that did many miracles, Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, just touching his bones revived a man and brought him back to life. All right, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1. We're, we're going to read the whole uh, chapter, I guess. I'm going to make a point. Deuteronomy 34, 1. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the Mount of Nebo to the top of Pisgah, that is, over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of Pomptes, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. Because Moses did something that displeased the Lord. So the Lord says, I'm going to show you the land, but you're not going in. Verse 5, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there, died. Moses died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. Peor was a, a false god. Beth means house. A house of Peor, false god. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre or his grave unto this day. So, God, it, this makes me believe that God himself buried Moses. Because if no man knew where his grave was, his sepulchre, the only person that could have done it was God, right? Verse 7, And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel, nor un, uh, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. And in all that mighty hand and, all, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. Hmm. Did you know that the devil disputed over the body of Moses? Why? Was Moses, was his bones filled with the same power that Elisha's was? Well, in Jude chapter 1 verse 9, we read, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So even Michael, when arguing with the devil, when the devil's disputing about the body of Moses, even Michael dared not bring against the devil a railing accusation, but he just said, The Lord rebuke thee. So, 
Yeah, it makes you wonder why in the world would, if nobody knew where Moses was buried, God himself had to have buried Moses. No man knew. And maybe that's why, because, you know, they would have dug up the bones as a relic. Sadly, the Roman church and the uh, Orthodox church, they love their relics. Sadly. So, all right. Well, this is part one of Resurrections in the Bible. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.